and welcome to Talk to Me. My name is Heather. And I'm Kathleen. And this week we are covering an episode of People Magazine Investigates, specifically Season 6, Episode 1, which you can stream if you have Discovery Plus, which you definitely should. It has sapped a whole lot of my time lately. <laughs> I am sorry I for that. I finally watched all the seasons of Evil Lives Here. <laughs> Uh, this is one of those cases that I remember when it happened, but after a certain point, like, you don't hear much more about it. Yeah, I just kind of disappear from the headlines. But probably because, like, the main case occurred in Idaho, which is quite... Idaho. Quite a ways from Texas. Utah, Idaho. Before we get into that, info and links for our social media and email is in the show notes, along with info if you would like to be an absolute angel and donate to us on PayPal pitch is done let's get into this nightmare are you a fan of people magazine i hadn't been but i did like this <laughs> although i will say that they've clearly uh really stepped up their whole like reenactments and production stuff because <laughs> in the very first episode like i went back and started from the beginning mm -hmm. and um it's the lost girls yeah. and there's this scene where the guy's like supposed to be dumping the woman's body or whatever and the link that he threw this woman who is supposed to be a dead body <laughs> holy shit <laughs> the first season is basically super big cases that you know about yeah yeah i was like oh, i already know all about this but i guess i'll go ahead and start because i got a lot of time you know that i just don't <laughs> do bullshit so i never partook until i started dating andrew going over to his family's house his mom apparently is a fan so whenever i had stomach issues I'd use the guest restroom because she always had a copy in there and I had no idea like they'd cover crime stories. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess they did cover, did they cover the, oh gosh, what is the, the girl that was stabbed overseas Which in one? Italy or whatever. Oh the, yeah, yeah. Amanda Knox. Yes. That one, that one. I, I think they did like a investigative report or something on that. <laughs> I don't know. So, I mean, I guess they do. I knew they did like big I just things. thought it was nothing. Look at this famous bitch doing grocery shopping without makeup on. What a hideous doesn't she, beast. <laughs> doesn't she look phenomenal? I had no idea they did crime stories. Um, Who wore it better? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, People Magazine Investigates premiered on the Investigation Discovery, or ID channel, on November 7th, 2016, and covers little-known cases as well as big cases we've been in inundated with, like John Bonet, Ramsey. <laughs> I know there's an episode on that. Oh, of course. That, like, like, like everyone's. What do we not know about that case at this point? This latest season also covered the murder of James Bird that I am absolutely sure you remember as a kid. Jasper, Texas, where they lynched that black guy. Yes. Had him behind the truck. I remember that. Oh, yeah. That was a rough one. We were way too little. <laughs> that case is on there. and That one's pretty rough. Oof. I don't, there I don't may know. actually be a documentary about that case. I'm not sure. If there isn't, there should be. Yeah. I don't so know that I could watch it's it. It's but... rough, yeah. <laughs> Who knew there were racists still around in the 90s? <sighs> I'm sorry, did you say the 90s? I thought you <laughs> oh, meant, you like, mean in today. the White House a couple years ago? <laughs> I, I thought you meant, like, last <laughs> week in Texas. Always. This state's horrible. Anyway, so we are covering season six, episode one, the groin, groiny, groiny, groiny. It's G R O E N E. Groiny. So, and I like I had only ever read, so I always thought that it was just like the growin. Yeah, but yeah, it's apparently the groiny family. Groiny, I think I believe it's groiny family. That's massacre. what everyone in the thing said it. Yeah, so it well, just like, I mean, I haven't watched it. In <laughs> I, I always read a lot of everything, and so sometimes, like, when I hear words actually said out loud, I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. Yeah, I read so a lot So that's how it – but the thing is – Copernicus, one that threw me for the longest time because I had always read it for years, and I was like, oh, Copernicus. I'll still I'll still <laughs> say a word that, like, I've – Copernicus. I'll, I'll still say a word that, like, I've never actually said out loud before, and Jason will be like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> Do you mean da-da-da? At least I know words. And I'm, oh, <laughs> my bad. I feel so stupid, but I've just only ever seen them in print. Sorry, I read all the time and didn't talk to people. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, I'm right there with you. I got it. Bookworm problems. Mm -hmm. So the Grony Family Massacre 
episode aired on June 6, 2022. This episode does come with a warning because there are crimes committed against children, but even this series like doesn't, doesn't go into go it. Into yeah, it is. Whoa. Because that's how bad it is. I may lightly describe some things, but it's it's some bad things. Yeah, um, there were some things that I was um, curious about that hadn't been mentioned in the article, and or I mean in the show. Yeah, in the show. And so I went, looked for news articles, and I couldn't find anything. And then I somehow stumbled upon his. You found his blog. Yeah, I it's didn't read. Rough. I didn't read his whole blog. I just read the post that he made about what he said happened from his viewpoint or whatever which some of it no which doesn't. some of it was just bullshit but i i i read that and i was just oh okay i read more than that we'll and get then into i just gave up and i was like i don't know why i'm even looking for this like i need to go do something else yeah he's awful um if you really want to know details i'm sure you can find it on the internet we're just not that kind of podcast <laughs> So this series features talking heads that either worked as editors or writers for People magazine, along with law enforcement officers, family and friends of victims, and sometimes the victims themselves. I just want to say the editor-in-chief. I was like, nice looking man. He's and not then, the editor-in-chief anymore. I, yeah, then I like <laughs> looked and I was like, oh, okay, he's not the editor-in-chief anymore. And he's also gay, so. <laughs> yes. I know how to pick him. <laughs> but he had a nice voice. It was so, very soothing. Yeah. In this case, we do have a victim, uh, super British Dan Wakeford, who at the time was the editor in chief at People magazine, begins the story talking about the quaint city of Coeur d'Alene. Idaho isn't even that big. So even Coeur d'Alene with a population of like 55,000 is number seven on the list of biggest cities by population in Idaho. It's like Boise, number one. <laughs> number one is Boise with less than a quarter of a million. Oh, which is Idaho. insane to think about. So 2005, 40-year-old divorced mother of five, Brenda Groney, is living just outside the city limits, raising her three youngest children. This area has been in her family for decades, to the point that the house she's living in was the same house her dad grew up in. Yeah, so the family like is very well known in the area. After her divorce, the two older boys went to live with their father. So Slade, 13, Dylan, 9, and Shasta, 8, are living with Brenda and her boyfriend, Mark McKenzie. I can't imagine having four boys and then finally getting that girl. Well, and her sister even said when Shasta was born, it was just, go oh, because, like, finally they could buy all the princess stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a whole new world. It's why I'm scared to have any more kids. Because I already got two boys. I know my luck will end up being another boy. Um, <laughs> I don't want to have it. any more kids because I know I would have another girl. And let me just tell you <laughs> that two girls is too many. <laughs> well, at least they know how to pee into a toilet properly. Um, well, that doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, that doesn't even matter. I, I bet your kids. Your youngest, I could see that being iffy. She doesn't wipe her ass. <laughs> but like, all I could think of was Malcolm in the middle. Like, I know what Lois went through. I'm not having any more boys. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> So Brenda and Mark getting together was sweet because they'd always known each other. Uh, one of those stories that they had no intention of ever being in a relationship together. You're they just, just good friends. friends and yeah, it and then just they just, yeah. Brenda and Mark had been dating for four years before she asked him to move in. She wants to make sure this is the right guy. <laughs> she learned her lesson. Yeah, I mean, good for her, especially you know when she's got three children living yeah. with her, and just you know she wants to make sure it's the right fit. Uh, May 16th, 2005, Bob Hollingsworth, a neighbor, went over to the Grony home to pay Slade for mowing his yard. Okay, but on your, like, on the closed captions, did you notice that it said that he, he said that Slade came over and asked if he had any bunny, any small yes. bunny or something like that. <laughs> and I got excited because I was bunny. He's gonna, he wants a bunny. And then when he said, yeah, you could mow this. And I was like, where is he doing that yeah, for a bunny? Like, his mouth isn't adding up to what that is saying so it i had to go back so much yeah. i was well because funny. he's one of those guys uh, yeah no. it's a little boom howery so. <laughs> i was just what the, where, did, where did we come with like bunny <laughs> and mowing a lawn he's gonna pay him for mowing his yard with some money <laughs> he found a door to the home open and spotted some blood and immediately called the sheriff I think it was the back door that was open. I liked how he said that the sheriff was like, we'll send somebody out. He's like, you better send a lot of people. Yeah. 
and it had to have been a rough scene. They find Brenda Mark and Slade dead with their wrists and ankles secured with duct tape, and some of them had... uh, Zip ties. Zip ties, yeah. And had obvious damage to their heads from a blunt instrument, and based on body temperature, they'd been dead for less than 24 hours. As I mentioned earlier, this family is well known in the area, so one of the law enforcement officers that arrived on scene knows that there are two more kids that live in this home that are missing from the scene. They also find what is only described as a small arsenal of weapons in the home that are still there. So if this was just a robbery, all this shit would be gone. Yeah, just, ugh, just, I can't help but think of how gruesome it would be. I mean, just, ugh. This scene is a lot, so thank God the Idaho State Police and FBI get involved. They know we can't handle this. Yeah, there's not enough people. Of course the media shows up, and that's how Brenda's mom finds out about her daughter's death. I could not believe that. from the fucking news. That's so awful. Because, yeah, their house, everybody goes over there. If that's on the news, everybody's going to recognize the home. It's bad. Yeah, it's just it's fucked up. I was just, oh, couldn't have the, couldn't call her first. I know. So now the main focus is on finding Shasta and Dylan and the poor family. They can't even take time to grieve for the other three people because they have to find these kids. Of course, they check with the dad and he doesn't have them. I mean, that's an easy one. Yeah, and they weren't sleeping over with a friend yeah. or anything like that. So where this crime occurred... There is just nothing out there except for mountains and trees. So it's going to be quite the search to check the area. I think they said later they searched over 400 acres of land. Jeez. So it's just. That's a lot of, that's, that's <laughs> a lot of searching. And since the house is right off an interstate road, they also put out an Amber Alert for the kids. Uh, Thank you, Amber Hagerman. Oh my God. Traumatized me as a child. I still remember Shock. that day. My sister and I were playing in the front yard and my parents just came out. And we're like, all right, inside, inside, inside. Just we had no idea why until a couple of days later when they found her. It's like, I will always remember that I day, I still though. use that story to scare my kids. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've used it before. I didn't go into details, but. That and lots of internet stories. I use lots of those. <laughs> she met someone on the internet. Do you know yes. where she is now? She's dead. Well, now you sound like the dad from Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> <laughs> or the, the dad um, having the guy with the one hand in uh, Arrested Development. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should have left a note. <laughs> So investigators learn about a party the family had thrown on the 15th, which would have been the night of the murders. They're a very friendly family, so it wasn't a surprise that there would have been just a family barbecue that, you know, anyone could attend. And I don't think it was even planned. It was just... People were just showing up. People were just showing up, and so it turned into a party. At some point during the party, there was a small argument between Mark, Brenda, and their friend Bob Lutner. Bob apparently owed Brenda money, and there was a disagreement between the three. The kind of fight that could happen between friends that have been drinking. It's nothing oh, yeah. serious. Get a couple beers and yeah, yeah. you don't bicker about anything. Normally, you wouldn't take something like that seriously, unless, of course, someone involved in an argument like that ends up dead. And Bob isn't an angel. He has a criminal record for drugs and domestic battery. And they find his prints at the scene. But again, he's a friend of the family. When they said so. that, I was just, well, of course, he was at their party, yeah. like, literally the so night before. Doesn't like, mean a lot. The police search for Bob to talk to him, and he's gone. So they put on, put out a statement to the media that they're looking at him as a suspect. Which, whoa, chill, guys. Seems insane. <laughs> yeah. Just Let's... blast this dude's picture all over the news. Baby steps. This is how people get killed. Here's the thing, though. He told his probation officer he was leaving town to see the family, so I can't imagine him murdering a family he considers friends and then telling his probation officer, like, I'm leaving town. Yeah, like, he's just, going to, like, a funeral for an aunt or something. Yeah. Um, turns out he really did have to leave town suddenly to see his family because his aunt had died and he left to attend her funeral. So in the middle of grieving for an aunt and then his friends... He's also being blasted as a possible murderer. <laughs> and not just him. Like, like, he apparently is being looked at as murdering a teenage boy. That's, yeah, a 13-year-old and then taking two kids. Yeah, that's that's way worse than just murdering some adults. I don't care what you say. They don't really explain the fight other than Bob's house was being foreclosed and he borrowed $1,000 from Brenda. And, like, that's it. And... So I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter much because Bob is eliminated as a suspect. Yeah, it wasn't Bob. 
So because of the brutality of the scene screams crime of passion and you've got two missing kids. So the next person they want to look at is Steve Groney, Brenda's ex-husband. And he totally looks like a rock and roll biker. Do you, they describe him as and his he, hair <laughs> and he can't his be that luxurious. He can't be that dangerous because he and the older boys are living with, with her Brenda's mother. Mom. Yeah. Her mom is his alibi. <laughs> so you have to imagine if he's the one who committed this crime, Brenda's mom would have noticed if her two missing grandkids were suddenly there. Yeah, where is he keeping them otherwise? He doesn't have a place to stay outside of his own ex-mother-in-law's. She says he was at home on the computer that night, but he fails a polygraph, so he's still a suspect. How would she have not noticed blood or, again, the two children? Where is he storing them otherwise? (laughs) They finished the autopsy and discovered that a claw hammer was the murder weapon. Which is literally the most gruesome thing possible. If it was like a sledgehammer, that would probably kill you with one hit, but or at least knock you out. But a hammer is, you gotta just, oof. I mean, and after reading what he says happened, I just, Yeah, it's gonna take several hits. They discovered the blood smeared all over the house is from Slade, and they don't find any blood from Dylan or Shasta, which gives the family some hope. So Steve goes on national television to give a statement and to beg for the return of his children, But of course, during his statement, he says something along the lines of, please let my children go. They had nothing to do with any of this. So now people are like, whoa, what does he mean by that? Is it drugs? Any of this? Did he owe people money? What's happening? He's involved with the motorcycle gang. Does it have something to do with that? But he is also eliminated when the motorcycle gangs like go after children. Yeah, that's no. There's entire gangs dedicated. Protecting children. Protecting children. children. Yeah, that's just... (laughs) We saw that in Abducted in Plain Sight, right? Yeah. Yeah, the... For testing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they have proof he was on the computer when the crime would have occurred. And again, where would he have put the kids? (laughs) He's living with Brenda's mom. And he doesn't seem like the type of person that would be able to kill his own child either. No, I mean... They're at a suspect, so all they can do now is just follow any tips that get called in for the Amber Alert. And I remember them doing a really good job of keeping Shasta and Dylan in the media. Like, oh, yeah. I remember. It was all over the news. Yeah. It was everywhere. The grandmother said, you know, you'd be driving by and there Amber Alerts on all the, um, over, like, signs yeah, for traffic. Yeah, being, like, states away, I remember it being on the news. Yeah, they were, they were everywhere. Uh Seven weeks after the murder, in the early morning hours of July 2nd, 2005, a manager at a Denny's calls in about a girl that looks exactly like Shasta, who is with a tall man. Amber Pierce is a fucking hero. She works nights at Denny as a waitress. She came back from her break at about $1.45. I almost said $1.45. Jesus Christ. You can't buy anything for (laughs) $1.45 these days. Thanks, Obama. (laughs) She comes back from her break at about 1.45 to see this older man sitting with a young girl in her section. Anytime I'm just going to say, that if there's a child in a Denny's at 1 a.m., th- no, I'm next like... Next thing, anytime you see a kid up that late, like you're going to take notice. Yeah, because you're silently judging them. Oh, yeah. I remember working overnights at Walmart, and I'd see people bringing in their kids. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? They should be in bed. God. But even more strange, the girl is filthy and refuses to even look up for the menu she's coloring, the kid's menu. And here's something I don't think I ever paid attention to in this story. This Denny's is in Coeur d'Alene. I thought that was... Ju- I was... What the fuck? Which what is where is the crime occurred. So this city is very familiar with what Shasta and Dylan look like. Because I'm sure those flyers are everywhere. Yeah, they're probably the hanging up in the Denny's. talking about this case. I always I've remember... I read somewhere that like one of the customers said something and even put the flyer down or whatever. And was, that's definitely her. Like she's definitely- I remember hearing her being found at a Denny's. But I don't think it ever clicked that it was in Coeur d'Alene where the crime occurred. Not the smartest move. But no. Thank God. So the waitress recognizes right away this little girl, Shasta. She stays cool as a cucumber, takes their drink orders, and then heads to the back to tell her manager to call 911. Amber knows it's going to take the police some time to get there, so she's just like playing it cool, trying to distract this guy. Your daughter's shake is going to take a minute to make. I can't get this machine to process your bill. Just whatever she can to make sure this guy doesn't take off with the girl. 
And eventually cops just swarm this place. And that's when we cut to Shasta now telling her story, which is incredible. First time I watched this, had no idea she was going to be in this show. Because it just seems like something you wouldn't want to talk about. Yeah. Although I imagine it's probably good for her to talk about at this point after yeah everything. After she was found and everything came out, I never remember hearing anything else about her. So police have Shasta. They've arrested. I remember some things. <laughs> Mostly the bad ones. Yeah. They've arrested Joseph Edward Duncan III. Always a junior. But where is Dylan? Side note on Wikipedia, Joseph Duncan's other names include Jet. And, and Jazzy, Jazzy Jet, Jet. Which I don't think is fair or appropriate for him. This case is fucking awful, so you gotta laugh at something. Jazzy Jet is just... I'm glad you noticed that because I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Well, and also they, in, in the Wikipedia, it said that the jet thing be- came from his initials or whatever. The But it doesn't. It doesn't because that would be, be Jed. Jed. Yeah. And so I was really upset because I feel like Jed would be and a Jazzy, more appropriate Jazzy nickname. Jazzy Jed is Jazzy with an I, which also... Doesn't fit. <laughs> I just... We focus on the wrong things. I just, want to, <laughs> I just want to know what his prison husband was thinking when he gave him that nickname. Jazzy Jed. You can't say it without, like... <laughs> yeah, jazz hands. Yeah. Jazzy jet. Jazzy jet. But then you want to snap. <laughs> jazzy jet. Jazzy jet. No, not an appropriate name. Right, we're awful. He should have been Jed. <laughs> should have been dead. Hey! <laughs> and this guy isn't even from this area. His driver's license says he's from Fargo, North Dakota. Which I immediately was like, Fargo? <laughs> oh, and he's a fugitive from Minnesota on a molestation charge. This is an absolute monster. How bad could he be? I'm glad you asked. He's a level three sex offender, which is like... Also, am I the only one who thought that his mugshot from when he was first arrested and convicted as a sex offender, he looks like he's 12. Yeah. I was like, he's a sex offender already? He looks like a child. (laughs) So let's quickly go through his history. His first recorded sex crime was in 1978 when he was... 15. He raped a nine-year-old boy at gunpoint, which makes me ask, why does a 15-year-old have access to a gun? Is it the 70s? We just... It was the 70s. <laughs> the next year, he was arrested for driving a stolen car. My question, why was he even out to be able to steal a car? Hmm, was he, he not in some kind of juvenile detention? No, because detention? this is when he gets sent to a youth facility where he confessed to a therapist assigned to him that he had raped and sexually assaulted several boys. Hey, do you think he said 16 or something like yeah. that? I'm just like, holy fuck, you are still a child yourself. Where do you find the time? In 1980, he had stolen guns from a neighbor and kidnapped and raped a 14-year-old at gunpoint. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison, and even though he's already proven to be a monster at this point... He only served 14 years. And he was so young. Holy shit. But it's okay, because he's arrested two years later in 1996 for weed. (laughs) I think that I, yeah. And was released on parole several weeks later with new restrictions. I think I read that he was only out of prison uh, maybe a year or two or something like that of his entire adult life. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, just constantly in and out of prison. Yeah. He basically went in before he was even an adult legally and yeah. had basically just been out on various paroles. Yeah. And then back in the slammer. Um, so, yeah, you rape some kids. Not cool, buddy. But you smoke weed. Now we're really going to tighten the strings on you. In 1997, he violated his parole and was sent back to prison to finish his sentence and was released again in 2000 for good behavior and moved to Fargo, North Dakota. Where he failed to register as a sex offender. March 2005, he was charged with the July 3rd, 2004 molestation of two boys at a playground in Detroit Lakes. I almost said Michigan because I said Detroit. (laughs) Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. On April 5th, 2005, a judge set his bail at $15,000. And someone posted it for him. I was like, who the fuck is this person? The charges and the history he has, and that's the bail amount? I couldn't believe someone posted it. Yeah, it ended up being posted by some businessman he had been friends with. And of course, he skips town and disappears until July when he's arrested at the Denny's. What was that one we just did where 
his cellmate posted the bail for him. <laughs> I just had like a whole conversation with my kid recently about what bail is and what it means and all that stuff. And she's like, what happens if you don't show up? And I was like, you forfeit that money. Yeah. The bail system is so fucked up the way it's said, too. Nonviolent crime should not have bail. That's insane. Goes after poor people and people of color. We're not getting into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I just watched a good, wild ass video about um, like forfeiture or something like that. Like where if the highway patrol or whatever searches your vehicle, they can just take your stuff yeah. and you forfeit that yeah. and stuff. Uh, just fucking wild. Like some Any guy- cash they find, they can keep. Yeah, and the the DEA will kick back some of it to the Highway Patrol, yeah. and it's just like a whole fucking, yeah. they're basically, like, watch this guy lose a hundred fucking thousand dollars. Yeah. Anyway. Trying to keep the political stuff, but it builds up the anger. So he is a great example of how the system just does not work in this country. He gets arrested all over the country, Washington, Missouri, North Dakota, Minnesota, Kansas at one point, I think they mentioned. And then he's just a world traveler getting let out early, even though he's constantly violating parole. A level three sex offender who has proven time and time again he doesn't care about the rules should not be out on the streets. No, I mean, if you continually violate your parole and can't follow the rules, you should be in prison serving your full sentence. Well, but he did serve his full sentence, technically. Then you need more time. <laughs> So, I hate this part. Uh, At the hospital, Shasta's poor little body has been battered so badly by this guy that she needs stitches. Yeah, when she said that she went into surgery because they had to put stitches in, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah. But she is able to be- she's eight. Like, fucking eight. I have an eight-year-old, and just, I can't even fathom someone thinking of her in any kind of sexual way. Yeah. Like, I can't even, like, stand when people are like, oh, do you have a boyfriend? Like, no, she's fucking eight. <laughs> she thinks boys are gross. They have cooties. Stay away. <laughs> but she is able to be reunited with her dad. Uh, Joseph Duncan, being the piece of shit he is, refuses to talk to detectives, so they have to turn to Shasta and re-traumatize her again by going all over the details so they can find Dylan. On the night of the murders, she talks about being asleep and being awoken by her crying mom and being told that her and Dylan need to go out to the living room. Well, she said, is it time for school? Yeah. When they arrive, Mark and Slade are already on the ground bound up with a guy wearing a ski mask and holding a shotgun. He ties up the rest of the family and eventually carries Dylan and Shasta outside. He goes back into the house and Shasta reports hearing thumping. Which would be from the hammer. And she said some groaning from Mark. Yeah. She sees Slade stumble outside covered in blood and the guy follows him out and hits him some more with the hammer and leaves him for dead on the lawn. Beating a 13 year old with a hammer. Repeatedly. Fucking Just... evil. This still doesn't cl- kill Slade because based on the blood evidence and... Where he's eventually located, he got up at some point, went into the house. I think they said there was blood on his bed, like he had laid Lay there. down, and then he got up. And then he got up, put a pillow under his mom's head, and then just lay down next to her. And died. And died. Which yeah. reminds me of- Which is why there was, the like, one, his blood all over the house, like- What was the one we talked about? I want to say Peter Porker. Is that his name? Where he hit his dad and his it dad was, got up. and It was Peter Porker, which I keep wanting to say, <laughs> Peter Parker. Yes, it was Peter Porker, the one who uh, got up and did about his, like, daily morning yeah. routine. Like, <laughs> nothing had happened. Teeth, went out to get the newspaper. And Shasta even said, like, he was just kind of staring at her, kind of dazed. Yeah. So he unties Shasta and Dylan and has them follow him up to a stolen car and they start driving. So I, he rented the car in minnesota and then just took off with it yeah i never returned it yeah um can't remember if it was minnesota or north dakota doesn't matter it was stolen but one of those one of those states with snow she <laughs> she falls asleep and when she wakes up they are at lolo national forest in western montana i think they said it was like 150 miles from the house i didn't double check that yeah, it's the next state say, over. Yeah, so. I want to say 150 sounds right. So where he has them is unbelievably desolate. 
Montana is the fourth largest state in the U.S. and yet 45th in population. So, <laughs> not a lot of people. <laughs> That's a lot of land. I did not know it was the fourth largest. <laughs> so, the abuse they go through is just horrendous. Within the first hour of being at the campsite, he sexually assaults him. And they, While they recite the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, it's Which so was weird. fucking wild. Like, yeah. Um, and they are just repeatedly molested and tortured for weeks. And when he needed to go into town, he would tie them to trees and leave them. So it's not like they ever had a chance to run away for help. And even if they could, she even said she didn't know where they were exactly, yeah. and they would have starved to death. Lolo is 2 million acres large and full of animals. So even if they took off, they could have been killed by a bear, mountain lion, or just starved to death. Eventually, Joseph Duncan tells the kids they're going home and begins packing up the campsite. The kids start walking to the car when Shasta hears a loud boom and then feels her brother's hand slip out of hers. She turns to see him on the ground, shot in the stomach. Joseph Duncan walks over to them holding his shotgun and shoots Dylan in the head. He then makes her help him put the body on a tarp and set it on fire. A few days after that, he gives her the choice of how she would like to die. Just a nice guy. Give her some choices. Strangulation or shot with the gun. Uh, they did always like, say that you should give doing... your children choices so they feel like they have control. <laughs> yeah, he's doing this. Maybe like, not she like has this. A choice. Yeah. She's eight. <laughs> like, it's insane. Yeah, and so of course she's like, well, I don't want to be shot because yeah, that looks horrific. I just horrific. saw my brother being shot, so she chooses strangulation. He ties rope around her neck, and as he's pulling on it, she starts begging and calling him Jed. And for some reason, that works. And he stops and says her calling him by that nickname must mean she really cares about him. Like, what a fucking psycho. Well, and that's like the nickname that his prison husband gave him. <laughs> I, was just saying, so I don't know bizarre. if it's like some kind of... How does that come connect? up when I don't you're talking know. to an eight-year-old? Just casual. Oh, you can also call me Jet. That was a nickname given by my prison husband. Uh, it says, you know, so cool. You're trying to impress the eight-year-old. <laughs> Or I was in prison. Jazzy Jet. <laughs> Jazzy. Yeah. He thinks prison impresses this eight-year-old. <laughs> I was in prison once. It's a hard time. <laughs> well, I was in school and I made a turkey using my hand. <laughs> um, also, speaking of prison, I had a horrible nightmare the other day that I had to go to prison. And someone had told me that it was just going to be for like a day or two. But then I found out it was much longer than that. And I was freaking out because I didn't have enough PTO for that kind of time. <laughs> I was going to say <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to take care of the kids? Because I know my husband can't do it. I was just, I don't have an, enough vacation this far into the year. I've already got my days planned out. I don't have time for more than just a day or two in prison. I know. In a couple weeks, we're going to be gone for a weekend. And I'm so stressed about how he's going to take care of the kids for two, three days. <laughs> uh, Jason wanted to know if he should book us a hotel along the way. And I was an eight hour drive. Are you seriously <laughs> con considering that we should stop halfway through it well, for a hotel be stay? Gone. From a Friday to Sunday. Yeah, he was like, oh, I didn't know you were going to be gone for such a short amount of time. I thought maybe you would want to stop along the way and on the way back. No, we ain't got fucking time for that shit. Yeah. I'm driving straight through eight hours. He has never put the kid down by himself. I'm terrified. <laughs> Jason's a pro. You can have him on speed dial. <laughs> like, putting a three-year-old down with two of us is already difficult. Oh, my God. Oh, God, I hate this next line. So he starts getting more comfortable with her and opens up about how he stalked her and her family for days. Which I would love to hear about that. It's just really emotionally heartwarming. What do you say to that? Uh, oh. Okay, that must have been a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, he asked her if she would like to meet his mom like they're dating. <laughs> and she says yes. She's so fucking smart. Dude, this kid they're is a fucking in, hero. They're in Montana, and his mom lives in Washington. So I don't know if you've looked at a map lately. I failed geography, so. <laughs> but Idaho is in between those. So she's just so like, she's like, okay. Okay, if you're going to show me your life, can we stop in Idaho so I can show you my life in Coeur d'Alene? Like, where I went to school. And my best friend. Where my best friend lives. So genius. Yeah. So that's why they had stopped at that Denny's. 
what an absolute idiot to stop in the same place you Where kidnapped. you took the child <laughs> seven goddamn weeks ago. It's not like they've forgotten about her. <laughs> it hasn't been day or uh, years. Like her face is still plastered like everywhere. No one was going to recognize her. Just the dumbest thing ever, but it was so smart on her part because it was definitely guaranteed that she was going to be yeah. spotted. She leads police to the campsite, so the family is at least able to have Dylan's remains. Uh, in the stolen Jeep that Joseph Duncan had, they recovered a laptop filled with videos and pictures of the torture he put them through. And they also discover he has a blog. <laughs> I wish it had been Live Journal, but it's just Blogspot. Ah, oh, I remember the good old days of Live Journal. <laughs> I've read over quite a bit of it. It's fucking bad like his writing not necessarily the things he talked about which is also bad but his writing is just horrendous he's um, never gonna have a book deal let me no, just say no no uh he blames everyone but himself for his crimes uh anytime there were sex crimes since he was a sex offender the cops would go question him which is how it works you dumbass yes. well he got tired of being accused of crimes so that's why he molested those two boys in minnesota and since he got caught for that and knew he was going to prison, he wanted revenge and really wanted to do something to make it worth going to prison for. So that's why he murdered Brenda Mark Slade and kidnapped Dylan and Chasta. Yeah, he basically decided he was just going to kill as many yeah. kids as he could. Like, how dare the cops judge me for my crimes? Like, they're so innocent. All I did was fondle a child on a playground. Yeah, he's basically, they lie to people all the time. And the judges are also criminals for sen sentencing people to death, which... I don't believe it's state-sanctioned murder, but to call a judge a murderer because they sentenced the people to death is a bit of a reach. And also, he complains that sex offenders get treated like Nazi sympathizers after World War II. I would say just don't read his blog. <laughs> I would say they're worse. <laughs> like, when you're comparing yourself to Nazi sympathizers after World War II and how they were treated, I don't know. <sighs> he's definitely one of those people that thinks that being a pedophile is just a sexual orientation or whatever it's, and it's, yeah, it's like, natural yeah it's a natural thing to happen he's gross i hate him looking at the stolen car's gps they find that the grony family was not the first targets there were a lot of waypoints said the family like homes. 30 something waypoints they said 33 waypoints and most of them were family homes so not really a specific number but it was a lot of family homes that were isolated that he stopped at, which is fucking terrifying. Never been more happy to live in the suburbs. Yeah. Also removing every indication that I have children from my front of my house. <laughs> yeah, stop on people who had toys and swing sets in front of their homes. No, I definitely don't have that shit. No. Like, fuck that. <laughs> I don't even let my kids open their blinds because they're like, like, especially the oldest. Well, the one has to because he has to spy on everybody in the neighborhood and if there's garbage trucks, he's gotta see those goddamn garbage trucks and when the neighbors go out to the car he bangs on the window and tells them hey Good morning. yeah hey. <laughs> it's like i'm being held in here i know that's what i'm terrified about <laughs> i just think of that picture of the kid naked pressed against the window <laughs> i just pete and pete when they went on a field trip or something they put help in the window <laughs> i think it was a little pete held up a sign <laughs> so a cop actually stops the bus <laughs> Was it that darn cat or whatever when the the sign or like the message just said hell instead of help? <laughs> this person's like, I just remember Pete and Pete. Ah, <sighs> Pete and Pete. All right. We are very distracted today. I don't know what it is. I think it's just when we're talking about like need heavy to laugh today. Yeah, it's I think it's just rough. when we're talking about like the heavy stuff. We're just okay. Well, let's also talk about these funny things that we're thinking <laughs> of in the back of our minds. We only see each other one night a week. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy when you have kids. Yeah, and now we get into something that I had no idea about. I don't know about you. I didn't. That's why when you messaged me, I was like, "What?" Yeah, the cops sit again. The cops again sit down with Shasta and she begins to tell the police about other crimes Joseph Duncan told her he committed that he was never charged for. And this leads them to connecting him to the April 1997 murder of 10-year-old Anthony Michael Martinez. He had been playing outside with his brother and friends in Beaumont, California when a man approached them asking for help finding a missing cat. I would totally be like, okay, where'd you last see your cat? These boys were like, 
no, this doesn't seem right. So they refuse to help him. So the man grabs... Okay, but the kid in the documentary said that he was okay, an easy dollar or whatever. And they looked for a little bit and then came back and were like, no, and they got their dollar. Yeah, they were, no, this is weird. So he grabbed Tony at knife point and just threw him into the car. After two weeks, Tony remains are found. He had been sexually assaulted and bound with duct tape, which sounds familiar. A fingerprint left on the duct tape would be later matched to Joseph Duncan, who confessed to the crime on July 19th, 2005. He even looked like the suspect sketch. Yeah. Normally those don't look. Yeah. They said like, like the when people, they faxed but... it over, they were just like, oh shit, this yeah, looks just it like, looks him. like him. His excuse for the murder? He wanted revenge against society again for sending him back to jail for a probation violation. Like, what an asshole. You violated parole. Like, maybe don't break the rules. You don't get revenge it's for not your own society's fuck up. problem. <laughs> But this isn't the only murder he confesses to. There's not much information I could find about this case, but on July 6, 1996, after leaving the Crest Motel in Seattle, I think to go get cigarettes for their mom or their brother, I don't remember, 11-year-old Sammy Jo White and her half-sister, 9-year-old Carmen Kubias, disappeared. Their skeletal remains would be found on February 10th, 1998, about 20 miles away in Bothell, Washington. I think it was an abandoned house. Yeah, they said there was a squatter there or something. A person found him. Yeah. Am I allowed to say squatter? I think it's unhoused. But isn't a squatter a little different than unhoused? I don't know. Because there's like, I don't know. Regardless, he did not have a good day that day. No, no, he really didn't. I hope they at least got him a sandwich. (laughs) And he had confessed to beating them to death. Until watching this, I had no idea this guy was a serial killer. No, I didn't either. I don't remember hearing anything They never mentioned any of that in the news. It was this huge headline about her being found. And then silence. Nothing else. Yeah, never heard anything about him going to prison for it. Nothing. So that's why I completely forgot about it until watching this. I was like, holy shit. Yeah, I remember that crime. So just to skip over all the trials, because... Those are always long. Let's just get straight to his convictions because that's the good a lot part. of trials and a lot of conviction. Idaho finds him guilty on three counts of first degree murder and three counts of first degree kidnapping. And his, he is sentenced to life without parole. California finds him guilty of first degree murder with special circumstances and guilty of kidnapping in the case of Anthony Martinez. And he is again sentenced to life without parole. I think Idaho sentenced him to five counts of life without parole. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, I want to say it was five. And then the big guns come up. With the, the federal. The feds get him on a lot. Guilty of kidnapping a child resulting in death. Kidnapping a child. Two counts of aggravated sexual abuse. Sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death. Being a felon in possession of a firearm. Possession of a stolen firearm. Using a firearm during a crime of violence resulting in death transportation of a stolen vehicle and possession of an unregistered firearm and he is sentenced to death they li- they literally <laughs> yeah they literally got him for everything they were just like across what state lines else? Like, was his inspection sticker expired that's the biggest thing. add that charge if he hadn't taken him across state lines it wouldn't have been federal yeah <laughs> fucking idiot so he had gone to Idaho first and found guilty but they waited on sentencing to see if he would get the death penalty federally and then once that happened... Oh, wait. Are kidnappings always federal cases? I don't know. I know, especially because he took them over state lines. Like, that's yeah, now I'm automatically like, remember, super federal. I can't remember if it's federal even if they don't. Well, I guess, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I just know across it doesn't state matter. lines. Fuck you. We have you. Yeah. So then, yeah, once he got the death penalty is when they gave him life without parole. And then is when California got him. Uh, jurors had to receive counseling after viewing the tapes he took of Dylan and Shasta because of how fucking awful they were. In 2016, Shasta started a petition called Slade and Dylan's Law where she stated convicted sex offenders should not be let out of jail. Basically, the, stri- the three strike rule, but for violent sex offenders, and it should just be one strike, which seems a little broad. It, I don't think it went anywhere yeah i i looked it up and in her thing she was even saying obviously there's a broad 
a array of you know different yeah, sex this crimes guy should not have been no out. he should not have and she was even saying you know there are some where people are registered as sex offenders but it was not something should not be yeah that they shouldn't be and then she's like not talking about them she's talking about the especially violent ones who are in danger of repeating and just you yeah. know which i mean i i understand where she's coming from but there are but like, also do i think limits. that it should be three strikes mm, no, no. <laughs> maybe a two strike and depending also on depending severity. on yeah because severity that's the thing like depending on severity yeah like if it's especially brutal yeah you should probably just go ahead and serve life yeah. in prison level ones where it's i was 19 she was 17 we were boyfriend girlfriend or well, yeah, and like in those cases, you shouldn't even, even be adults, registered. Like having sex in a car or something, and they get caught or peeing in, in public. Car. Yes, you should not be. Which a sex Lord knows, from I've had my fair share of sex in a car. <laughs> Straight up showing your dick to a child, like yeah, that's them. your intent. Yeah, definitely yes. By the time the petition closed, it had fifty one thousand eight hundred twenty supporters. And finally, in October 2020, Joseph Duncan underwent brain surgery after he was diagnosed with brain cancer. He declined any further treatment and rejected chemo and radiation therapy and fucking died March 28th, 2021 at the age of 58. Not soon enough. No. His body was cremated and hopefully is sitting on a shelf in a dark room just collecting dust. Because no one wanted to claim his or body. Or was used as kitty litter. Like, who gives a fuck, really? Shasta didn't really seem to have a great time afterwards. Kind of hard to move on. That's to be the a only time I remember the case recognizable. coming up. She even says like she didn't want to spend every Thursday in therapy. She just wanted to hang out with her friends, be a normal kid. Uh, throughout her teenage years, she was in and out of juvie for drug problems. But as soon as she found out she was pregnant with her older child, she said she completely changed her life around. And she got married in 2018. Uh, I think last thing I saw, she has four kids with another on a way, I believe, due They're this month. All boys, too, I think. I don't know. I, I think wanna she say has I saw, a fifth one due this month. I want to say that, like, something I read, she had four boys and a fifth boy on the way or something like that. I was like, oh, Lord, help her. That's a lot of boys. It's <laughs> a lot of boys. What if this fifth one was a girl? Just like what happened with her mom. That'd be crazy. That would be crazy. I, I did read that she was talking about the hardest part about having her first child was not having her mom there yeah that's gotta be rough um so the home and land was bought by the state of idaho they demolished the home and the land is repurposed as wetlands i don't know what that means i just know from arrested development when they were saving the wetlands <laughs> I also find, found one article that a trust fund was made for Shasta and they bought or built a home for her and her dad. She eventually got married, moved to Boise, and decided to give the home to her dad and any other family members to use it. And they it. kicked him out. Because she didn't want to be in that area. She wanted Which I totally just, get. Like, yeah. I mean, I can see why you would want to move away and not be the kidnapped celebrity. Yeah. So, yeah, she gave the house to her dad. Um... And then the trustees took her dad to court so they could sell the house and give the money to Shasta because her trust fund was running low on money, which is fucked to go against her wishes. Yeah. Like, she told her dad he could stay there. And yeah, the judge agreed with them and kicked him out of the home he lived in for over a decade. Steve Grony passed away, I believe, December 9th, 2019 of lung cancer. And I think that's the end of this story. She looked great. I'm really happy that she's yeah doing better and happy and was able to move on and get away from the whole... Oh, as best as she could. Yeah, I mean, obviously. I mean, fuck anyone who can fault her for having some legal troubles after what the fuck yeah, she went through. Yeah, I saw one thing. She got arrested, I think, for child endangerment. She left drugs near a baby. And even the judge was didn't sentence her to prison time. He sent no. her to rehab. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, when you have a childhood, rough, yeah, yeah, that that was fucking anything even, even anything that happens happened, in her life. But even before this happened, she had talked about how her parents had problems and Yeah, that house that they were living in didn't have a lot of amenities that I currently enjoy in my home. And yeah. I couldn't imagine. But her mom said that she loved living in the woods or whatever. 
she enjoyed it and just, well, more power to you i've been I couldn't in the live. family for so long and i am not about roughing it some people love being we are where staying their roots are we are staying in a four star i'm just kidding it's like a, a dump but <laughs> i'm not i'm just it's a dump it's not actually a dump but I was so many things reading about um what is it I would never want to stay in one of those. I'll do it when, like, someone else is paying for it and I don't have to deal with the whole situation. But I don't really feel comfortable staying in someone else's home home. Airbnb. Yes! Fucking shit, what is wrong with us? Yeah, I've read too many things about women staying there and having issues. Hidden, and, yeah, cameras and shit. Yes. No, fuck that. I'm or the stay. owners having keys to get in. And I'm going to stay in a hotel. Was, yeah, I was worried about where that. Where it's already... Yeah, no, we're staying in a hotel. I already got the dates booked. It's going to be swanky. It's breakfast. It's right there in the town. I don't have to worry about driving for an hour. (sighs) It's going to be fantastic. Do you snore? We haven't even discussed this. I do not snore. Oh, shit. Well, actually, I may snore. I don't know. (laughs) I'll ask Jason tonight. I think he does say that I snore sometimes. Well, I had to take sleep study, so apparently I snore 40% of the time. I probably (laughs) snore infrequently. I know I talk in my sleep. But I, 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 yeah, I've been told I have. But to. rest assured, we do not have to share a bed. I made sure we got two beds <laughs> because I'm with spread the, now. Because with the narcolepsy, I will wake up really quickly. So if I'm talking in my dream, I'll start talking out loud as I'm waking up. <laughs> I will ask you for a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I know, like as I'm waking up, because I'll talk out. One of my favorite is I was like. You got to put it in the basket. Andrew was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'm always just like, oh, nothing. Go back to sleep. <laughs> no, I definitely talk in my I sleep. I want to explain my dreams. Just just go back to sleep. Jason will be like, what the fuck are you talking about? I, was like, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I did sleepwalk once when I was a kid and I peed in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that now, but. <laughs> said that really quickly. I don't do that now. I don't do that. Now, now instead, I just got the dog shit in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the dog. Oh, God, I had a giant star. <laughs> do you watch It's Always Sunny? <laughs> They're trying to figure out if you pooped the bed. <laughs> I, was, I was laying in the bed, and I had the cover over me or whatever. I was just sitting there, and like I moved my leg, and I didn't have any pants on. <laughs> and I like, moved my leg, and I touched something, and I was like, what the fuck was that? I like threw the covers back and it was a turd. <laughs> and of course, Jason's, Im- Jason. Jason's immediate reaction is, oh God, Kathleen, did you poop the bed? No. <laughs> oh, we have a very senior dog who like poops in the house every day now, quite frequently in the bed. And so I love it's just that he just jumps to you, not yeah, the dog. Just like, and I was pissed because my leg touched it. And he was like, why are you yelling at me? I didn't poop bed. And I'm like, I know. I'm just frustrated because I touched it. Now I need to go take a shower. If you could just let me, me put the dog down. Or as he says, kill him. Like, it's oh not God. kill him. Humanely euthanize. You don't even have to be here. You won't be the bad guy. I'm like, oh, my God. It's not happening. It's not happening. Especially after the vet told us that they can't believe what amazing shape he's in for such an old man. So well, my thing is, you said he needed to go to the vet to get teeth pulled or something. Yeah, they did a full blood. If you just panel. go there and tell them, hey, can you just put the dog down? Oh my god, he would divorce me and, and then, never forgive no, 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 me. But then tell him, oh, the anesthesia must have happened. I had considered. <laughs> We can cut this part. I don't know why you're whispering. <laughs> Just tell me to cut it. <laughs> I had considered that he might pass during the the. He's old. It would make logical sense. I don't want him to die, but I do feel that like I don't want him to suffer anymore. It's the just, man it's, is shitting himself and doesn't realize it. He's poop, and especially now that they've got him on pain medicine for his arthritis for his hips. Yeah, and winter's coming. Um, they it's put him on. Worse. Yeah, they put her on put him on seizure medication, and so now he's oh basically like looped up all the time. And he literally will just walk around. He has no idea what he's doing. Yeah, that <sighs> arthritis is gonna get worse in a couple months. I'm telling you, it's fucking bad. He just said his mouth smells so horrible because he has a dead tooth. That's why I said just take him to the vet. It'll be our secret. But then the vet's like, "Oh, he's like in great shape." But it, they did like and a whole blood. Go, Shut your mouth. Yeah, they did like a whole blood <laughs> panel. Just dumb and dumb. And just, Shh. <laughs> like. Let's do the test again. Here's five dollars. <laughs> I 
I even yelled at him earlier because he was like, he's like, Do you, are you seriously, you're mad because I'm not letting to, you kill the dog? And I'm like, I stop saying kill. The dog has lived a long life. He is 13 years old and he's a lap. He will be 14 in January. <laughs> he's lived a good life. He has hardly any teeth. I'm like, the man. What is the age on those dogs? Like nine to eleven or something? Yeah, nine to eleven. That's insane. Yeah, he's he's had a good run. Like, and I'm saying this as someone like he's literally you like my love first this child. Dog. Yeah, I yes, love this dog. He is dog. my first child. I'm not sitting there. Like, oh, I'm fucking sick of this dog or something. Like, <laughs> I I would trade my left arm, which is a big deal because I'm left handed. Fuck. If I love you this had dog. the money, the first thing you would do is clone this dog. Exactly. I would absolutely. And that was always our intention, too. We were going to get a puppy and have it imprint, like Luke imprint on the puppy. So it would be very similar to Luke. But instead, we got Dean, who's a dumbass, and a fat <laughs> sausage. So now we just have Dean. And I'm like, fuck, we're getting a puppy and it's going to have Dean imprinted on it. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back later. Maybe. I don't know. I'm having a rough time. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, we're kind of like in a dry spell because all the documentaries coming out. I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't know. We may take a week off. I know we definitely will when we're gone, but. Yeah, no, we'll definitely. Unless we find a really cool alien documentary and we record while we're there, that would be so. And we can be illegally. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm looking forward to. That's why I was so jealous being there today with my dad because he's just high on morphine and gummies. I'm just like, you're so lucky. Just to be high I know time. your body's riddled with cancer, but, <laughs> but I'm jealous of that one aspect. <laughs> just laying in a bed with everybody bringing things to you when you're just, just laying there super watching high. TV, watching whatever you want. Because who's going to tell you you can't watch that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is true. That is true. He's got I'm like full power. What I want because I got cancer. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> All right, so yeah, we'll be back. Thank you for listening. Bye. Goodbye. That was a good one. Thank you for listening to Doc to Me. The opening music is by Twisterium. For comments or suggestions, we can be reached by email at doctomepod at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter at doctomepod and find a link to our Facebook group in the show notes. Thank you.